Kathy Yanka here. I'm a Texas teacher, and if you are too, you have definitely heard about STAR. I wanted to showcase today some of the new question types that we might expect to see in the spring of 2023 for our students. And at the time of filming this, it is spring 2022, so I'm trying to be prepared a year in advance and start thinking about how can my students as a part of the day-to-day -day instruction and assessment start to experience question types like what they will see on their state test in spring of 2023. So if you've ever seen the STAR app that we're starting to use here in spring of 2022, there are some practice sets in there and I'm looking at these green ones specifically for math. One example that I have pulled up here is about transformations. Uh, so this is a new question type that our students will be using on their STAR next year, and they call it drag and drop for obvious reasons. Uh, here's another question similar, um, that same drag and drop feature from an algebra end of course. Um, we've got an equation here as well as a slope to drag into correct fields. And it's always nice to have students experience and practice questions like this uh, before they have an assessment so I'm really excited to share a tool that I use for formative assessment all the time, and that is thatquiz.org. It is a web-based tool. It has exactly zero bells and zero whistles, but it's a really great creation platform if you're looking for a way to have your students experience something like drag and drop during your day-to-day -day instruction. Now, thatquiz.org has some tutorials, and I would encourage you to go to the website and sign up for a free teacher account. I've already done that and I'm logged in. I'm gonna get straight to the creation process, but that quiz, um, great tool, totally worth the time investment. It's self-scoring. You can have password protected classes for your students. Um, it's something that I do as part of my beginning of the school year startup annually. So I hope you'll consider using this. Um, where I'm going to go now that I'm logged in as a teacher, if you look down here to other tests and click on design, there are a couple of different options here. I'm going to choose slides. The slide editor in that quiz is really, really robust. You can do a lot of things with it, and that's where I'm gonna start. So we're gonna make a sample drag and drop question here um, just to show you how to do this. So I've already created an image in Desmos of a graph line. I'm gonna grab that from my desktop now and put it on the slide. Now that I have my graph on the slide, it's way too big. So I can go over to this resize tool and just drag and drop from the corner. And then if I'd like to move the graph, I just grab this little fingertip tool and I can move the graph someplace else. The next thing I'd like to do on my slide is actually write the question statement. So there's a text tool in the bottom right corner here. If you just select that and click on the slide, you can now type some text. So I'm gonna write a question. Now that I have my question statement in place, I'm gonna rearrange things a little bit just to give myself plenty of space. Now, to use the drag and drop, we actually start in that quiz by creating it like it's a multiple choice. So the multiple choice options are in this little area here. You can see that quiz defaults and makes one of the questions randomly the correct text. Um, we're gonna revamp this entirely because we're gonna make this into a drag and drop. Now, I don't want these font um, choices currently to stay here. So I'm gonna go into my text editor again, and I'm going to type in some answer choices. Now, I have a few extra choices here I don't really need. So now that I'm done typing what I want these choices to say, I'm gonna go back to this fingertip tool and drag these extra ones off the slide since I don't need them. Now, as this stands right now, it looks like a big old multiple choice question. That's not what I want. Going back to text, when I select each one of these, this new menu appears on the right side. And so you can change the functionality of each of these. So since my graph is the graph of the equation x equals three, I'm gonna change that font to be identification here in this list. And y equals three is incorrect. So I'm gonna choose identification false. Y equals 3x is also incorrect, so identification false. And then I have my slope options here. Um, 3 is not the correct slope, so identification false. 0 is not correct, so we'll also make that false. And since the slope is undefined, we're going to make that identification. And what we've just done here is convert things that were multiple choice answers 
into identification answers. The two correct answers need to have a home on our slide and the rest, they don't really matter where we put them. They're not um, going to identify with a correct location on the slide. They're just extraneous answers. So I need to do some moving around here and get all of these ones that I don't need out of the way. And if we look at the released star practice question that's inspiring this, you can see they have a placeholder for equation and slope. I'm gonna do that same thing here. I'm gonna type in the word equation and the word slope and rearrange things so all of these have a spot. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the placement of these. Remember, all those identification false choices that have X's on them, they're not gonna show up on our slide. I'm going to click save to show you what this looks like from the student view. Now I've created a sample class called Yanka. I'm going to assign this to and then when you click on that assigned quiz, you'll see a URL for a practice link has been generated. So now you can see what this will look like for students. The question says, what are the equation and the slope of the line? Move the correct answer to each box. Not all answers will be used. So you can see that quiz has put all of the choices nice and neat, all lined up underneath the slide. So our job is simply to drag the correct equation and the correct slope to the answer boxes. Once we click OK and finish, we did a great job. Now you can build your own drag and drop questions using thatquiz.org, and it's free.